Hi everyone, I'm Larry Rossin from ESPN and welcome to NSAF and we're delighted to be able to bring you some of the finest coaches and some of the finest athletes and have them kind of convey to you what they've learned in the sport and what gave them the success that they had. And I'm with a terrific athlete who has given back for years after she's retired to the sport itself here at the convention for USATF this year. I'm talking about Lauren Williams who has three Olympic medals and five world championship medals, including being world champ at 100 meters. And thank you, Lauren, for joining us. Larry, thanks so much for having me. It is great to be with you, yes. and you are quite a lady. This lady, and let's bring this up right away, um, was an outstanding student at the University of Miami, a finance major, graduating in three and a half years, is that what called? Three and a half years, I did it. And how did you combine, and when you went into college, did you have a plan of how hard to study and, and brokering your time every day as to how you would allocate it? Well, I took very serious the word student before athlete, and I went to the University of Miami because I was really impressed with the education that they offered, but also because, not because I wanted to be an Olympic athlete, because I wanted to be a really good student. So I always prioritized my schoolwork, and um, Coach Amy Dean did a really good job of making sure that we took both very seriously. So it was a 50-50 balance from the beginning. I think a lot of athletes sometimes think that you know, sport has to take precedent over their schoolwork, and the schoolwork is going to have a lot bigger return on your investment than um, sport. But you can, in fact, manage both, and I, I did manage both by really, you know, saying, you know, let me split my time down the middle between these two things. With if I need to put a priority on one side, it's always going to be that the sport side. Finance. I mean, the, the <laughs> it's always going to be on the, on it's the, always uh, the academic I, I side. Right. Exactly. <laughs> You're planning for life, in other words. Right? Exactly. Finance major. Yes. Okay. What are you doing for profession? Tell everybody. It's very interesting. Well, I've transitioned now from sport to life after sport, and I'm helping athletes and other young professionals kind of in their 20s and 30s organize their finances. So I am running a financial company called Worth Winning, and we help you with all things personal finance. So whether that's creating a budget, understanding you know, how much you should be putting away for taxes, if you got stock options, you got to figure that out. You name it. Anything having to do with you creating wealth and really creating a strong foundation, I help you with that. How many hours a day did you actually study? I would say maybe three hours a day was probably more accurate. Yeah, I think really what's important if you're a young athlete is showing up to class. Uh, I think we really take for granted the idea of being in that room, hearing what the professor is telling you, um, taking notes at, in that time period, and how that can cut down the amount of time you need to study outside of class. Being there instead of sleeping in and thinking you're going to read the book later at the last minute is a really valuable tool. And just showing the professor that you, you care to be in the room and you're engaged in the conversation, you retain the information a lot better like that. Right, well said. Uh, I followed the same pattern myself uh, when I, in my college days at Boston College, and I dealt with finance as well. Um, back to your situation, you were five feet three inches tall. When you started running track, did you feel that was a handicap? What was your mindset for some of the athletes out there that are not a sprinter and they're 5'9 or 5'8 or something like that? 5'3 five, five, can be a handicap, for you was no such thing. There is no such thing. Um, I, got, I got it quite a bit and I didn't know that it was a thing. I, I thought I was just fast. And frequently as I was you know, starting to see some success in college and in the pro world, people would say, you know, but you're so short, you can't be fast. And I'm like, what does that one have to do with the other? Uh, so I didn't see those barriers or those limitations around your height being actually um, rel relative to your, your ability to be able to go fast. Uh, I just thought of myself as, I'm gonna put one foot in front of the other as fast as I possibly can and I'm going to be the best me that I can possibly be. So I don't, I don't believe in anyone having barriers put around them because you're tall, because you're thicker, because you weigh this much, or lanky, that you're going to have this or that as your, your, your potential. Your potential is what you choose to make it by training hard, going after each effort, and, and making the best you you can. You might be able to help some of the athletes out there with all your experience and your achievements. When you look back, why don't you single out for us three workouts that you really liked and felt Im improved you as a sprinter? I think one of the things that was really unique about me as a sprinter is my coach deciding um, very early on in my college career that I did not have to do what everyone else does. I did not have to do it the way the textbook says do it. And so one of the things that all sprinters typically do is the 400. You know, whether you're doing 400s at practice or you're doing 400s in a race once or twice a year, you know, you could be a one-two runner, but you're going to run some fours. 
And we had a 300 meter, well first we had a 12 minute run <laughs> at the beginning of every year as kind of a fitness test. And I flunked with the big F <laughs> the 12 minute run every year. You were supposed to make it a certain distance and I never did. Um, so that was our first indicator that this might not be the way to go for me. The second was um, actually doing a 300 meter and not doing a really good job at that. Uh, and then she went on and still tried to throw me into a 400 and practice once and she's just like, this, this is not the best way to get the best effort out of Lauren. So really tailoring a workout to what is the best way for this particular person to reach her full potential is important. And so to answer the question, it is my first workout would be the 250 meter workout. So we would do um, four to five 250 meters with a little bit longer rest in between. Because another thing I didn't do really good with was um, that quick recovery, turn around and, and get back on do the line. Again. Exactly. I needed to be able to recover and I needed to be able to really exert speed. What percentage all out was each of the two 250s? Um, if I had to guess from a percentage standpoint, I would say around 70%. Um, so you were you were going pretty fast, and I was dog tired because I was a you know I was really a hundred meter runner. I I, I love to run a two hundred occasionally, so two hundred and fifty meters was really far for me. Um, so to be able to pick myself up and get back on that line and you know exert another effort, um, she really wanted me to recover so that I could continue to go fast, even though it was meant to be more speed endurance, and it worked well. Was that goal of the coach to have you strong and be able to maintain your speed really well, top end speed? in the last 30 meters of your 100, or mentally did it make you strong when you had to run a 200? I think it was more tailored to me being a good 100 meter runner, like I said, being a strong 100 meter runner. And I gave you confidence? It gave me confidence to be able to say, I can go hard for 250, so I can definitely go hard through the line. And then that was one of the things I struggled with, was uh, initially was running through the line and how important it was to not start dipping and abandon your, your race strategy three or four meters before, or even you know, five or six sometimes, trying to dip at the line, but to actually run through the line. And we used to always go and go to the track and find a mark um, that was well past the finish line, saying, this is your finish line. You, you don't stop at the line you see on the ground. You stop way over here. Um, that way, you made sure that you ran through the line. And you were taught not to dip, but to run through? Not to dip, but to run through. And I think, you, if you remember correctly, there was one where there was some dipping going on, and it cost me dearly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I could have done differently in that moment because that was going to be a close race no matter what, but um, if ever I regretted dipping instead of running through, that would be a time. When you look back on your career, what do you think track and field help you with for all of your life? Was it discipline? What, what aspect of what you went through did it prepare you to excel away from the track? I think that sport gives you so many life skills. In track and field in particular, you have this individual aspect, but there's also the, the importance of being able to work together when it comes time. And so the relay was always a good example of, you know, we're sprinters, we run against one another, but now we just race each other and we've got to get on this team and we've got to be able to work together. And so I think it really drove home the importance of, uh, one, being able to work on your own, but two, realizing that it's not about just you by yourself. You've got to be able to work well with others in order to really succeed in life. And you've got to be able to think about the big picture and all that you represent outside of just your individual performance, just your, your personal self, just your hometown, or just you know, your city. Uh, when you step on the stage for Team USA, you're representing a whole country. And it's so much bigger than that performance that you're doing. Um, this is something that is a collaborative effort by your team and the people from the country that are rooting for you in your city. And so that individual aspect, but also that team aspect is a really cool dynamic to be able to master both of those. And I learned that through track and field. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed Lauren Williams.